it is my greatest joy to present to you today my sannyas guru shiksha guru yeah that's enough because guru means everything master friend well wisher extraordinary figure in one's life because many people don't know what it means a guru because they don't have one or they haven't had didn't want to have one yet they have not come to the conclusion that they need one so they say guru is a fashion word so it's not what i'm trying to say shrila shrida maharaj actually came into my life after i already was initiated by shrila ac bhaktivedanta swami propa who had left the world in 1977 and I met Srila Srida Maharaj first in 1981. So, uh, in a sense, I already knew what I had to do. My spiritual master had already given me so many instructions, but there was something missing. How to live without him. How to continue the mission, how to continue spiritual life without the guidance of such a wonderful person as your guru who is the all in all for you and has given everything to you you see when my spiritual master left the world i was just 6 years in his mission means i was just a kid just a young kid with very little training even though the training had been beautiful and i'm eternally grateful for it anyhow the difficulties came specifically the difficulties came because his movement wasn't managed very maturely actually some some strange ideas appeared some people said oh now the spiritual master is gone now we should just divide the world in different zones and for each zone we assign a new guru and whoever joins the mission in that particular geographical zone he should automatically be initiated by that person without the choice something like no voice no vote no opinion no natural uh, drifting of your heart towards somebody no they wanted to mechanize it all to make it like beyond question and discussion it didn't work finally the whole thing broke to pieces when many of those people who had been zonal uh, spiritual masters actually gave up the process altogether and withdrew and, and they didn't help anybody anymore so you can imagine what a collapse or what a chaos came from that si- those situations so shri la bhakti rakshida maj was not a discovery which i made he was discovered long 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 time ago by his own spiritual master shrila bhakti siddhanta saraswati tak he said once after reading a poem written by shrila shrida maj now i can go because i see that there is somebody in this world who understands the substantial inner side of my teachings so that was a very charming uh, glorification you may imagine then again he was discovered by shrila ac bhaktivedanta swami propat shrila maj used to be uh, a close friend of his while they were in the gaudiya math of course shrila maj was senior he was the sanyasi and bhaktivedanta swami propat at that time was a grihastha and very naturally the relationship is very submissive with the sanyasi supportive and so it was so actually shila propat went to bombay to help shri ramaj opening the gaudiya math there and they met in alabat in different places because propat had the uh, pharmacy in in alabat in prayag pharmacy So after Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur left the world Srila Prabhupad went actually and met Sri Dashrida Maj and invited him to make his mission in his house 
Prabhupada used to have two houses at that time in Calcutta. One was his private residence, one was his where his business was functioning, and there was a second floor above. And in that second floor was the first Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat, started by Srila Sridamaj. And many old devotees in that place, many important things took place. Even uh, the problems bet between the two groups of the Gaudiya Mats were settled in that flat, imagined by Srila Sridharmaj. Srila Prabhupada talks about that time. He says, I used to work up till 3 o'clock, then I close my business and go up to be with Srila Sridharmaj. And we talk about the Bhagavad Gita and many other important things. And then at the evening, we go out for preaching, canvassing, and uh, playing the... I, Prabhupada used to play the Medanga, sometimes he would make the announcements. And you see, Srila Sridharmaj was very, very beloved by all his godbrothers. And so in Prabhupada's house, people used to come in and out there. The, the whole Gaudiya Mat practically, the, the Esselange, the most important members, the sannyasis, acharyas, they all came in there. So in this way, Srila Sridharmaj had a very important function. Srila Prabhupada also said that he wanted to make Srila Sridharmaj the Acharya of his own mission. But Srila Sridharmaj said, no, I, this is your service, you have to do that. So there was again and again encounters, and again and again intimate exchanges. In one letter Srila Prabhupada wrote to one devotee when he sent him to the ashram of Srila Sridharmaj, he said, you know, you should go and learn from Srila Sridharmaj. He's even my Shiksha Guru. What to speak of the benefit you get from his association. He also sent his devotees to go to this ashram of Ch Saraswat Gaudiya Mat, Chaitanya Saraswat Mat. He sent his devotees said, to learn how to make Vyasa Puja because the devotees, Prabhupada's disciples, they didn't know what to do and how to do that. So very, very intimate relationships were always there. Of course, then Prabhupada, when he went to the West and he started distributing wholesale spirituality and bringing so many people to India, still meetings went on. When Srila Srinamaj came to Mayapur Chandadaya Mandir and there was deity installation, Prabhupada said, now Krishna is installed already. The pure devotee of Krishna has come, so there's nothing more lacking for this installation. So this is the esteem Prabhupada had for Srila Sridharmaj. Then there's many instances before Prabhupada left the world where he actually said, go to Sridhar Maharaj if you have any philosophical questions. He told to Pradyumna Prabhu, his Sanskrit editor, only Sridhar Maharaj can help you further to uh, continue the translation of the Srima Bhagavatam and to look after it, that it's well done. So in this way, there's many. Tripurari Maharaj was another uh, Acharya in Sanyasa, in Prabhupada's time even, who was told, yes, go and listen to Sri Maharaj when you have any doubts. So it was given. And after Prabhupada left, all his disciples, leading disciples, actually went to Sri Maharaj. Not once, quite a few times. And he started giving them advice, of which they didn't like all of it. The first thing he told them, now you really have to surrender because now your guru is not with you. Now you have to figure out what's right because if you don't figure it out, you'll make a big problem. And then he said many things. I mean, you can read this as books about it. Sri Guru and His Grace. It, it, it has many of the transcripts of these original conversations. But anyhow, in essence he said, keep care of the spiritual movement of your spiritual master. Be generous and let the main temples of your spiritual master's mission be managed by some group of devotees, elder devotees, who do not accept disciples. And those who do accept disciples, let them make new temples. In this way, he gave a clear indication that this system should be very generous and free-flowing, that whoever wants to do something for Prabhupada should still feel welcome in this mission. But just after talking with him, they changed everything around. They said he, he made zones and a few devotees, were, like I just explained before, the zonal guru idea. And later they even blamed it on him, even though he hadn't said anything about it. 
As a matter of fact, they asked him originally, what do we do in, in, the, in the temples where no guru will be in charge particularly? Prabhupada, then Sri Ramaj said, then there you should make a group photo and put a group photo on the altar so that the people who are worshipping there, they can see you amongst the group. And that photo was actually taken, but it was never put on an altar anywhere because they didn't like it. That it was such a free and open thing. The, the, the parampara is free and open, you know. Every disciple has the right and duty to give to others to his fullest heart's content what he received from his spiritual master. These are like golden rules. If you don't follow them, if you don't accept them, then you will not be very successful. So he gave us the golden rules. But we were passed down as the lower rank devotees, just a few of those instructions. We at those days didn't know what Srila Sri Ramaj said. And only when we got very fed up with the misgiven situations, then we started investigating and we heard some devotees had gone to Srila Sri Ramaj with their misgivings and had been given some relief, had been given some, some help. So, 1981, I went myself. I said, I have to meet this pure devotee. And that was my first meeting. And then later, when, when I heard things from him, I became very enlivened. But only after reading his book, Sri Guru and His Grace, which was given to me by Atreya Rishi Prabhu in 1983, only after having received that book and after understanding the importance of it, I could understand this is the guideline. Here are the instructions which should be followed to uh, overcome all the difficulties in this mission, all the misgivings, all of them he clarifies. He explains Guru Tattva. He explains the, uh, the um, Parat, Pancharatrika Parampara. He explains the Bhagavata Parampara. He explains that sometimes it's necessary that people who are not so qualified are put in charge because there's nobody else and they can still represent the parampara, but the real representatives of the parampara are the Bhagavata parampara gurus, the fully self-realized gurus. But in the eyes of those who are coming new to the mission, they see them equally because the new devotee has to be given the chance to fully surrender to his guru by believing in his guru, by uh, following his instructions as they have come, like in our case, we were all initiated by a Bhagavad Parampara Guru, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. So therefore, all the disciples of his who repeat his instructions are actually giving the most essential, most wonderful instructions to the world. So in this way, we are in a quite safe situation if we just follow what he says. If we don't follow and we concoct our own thing, that's a different thing. So 19... 81 Srila Sri Ramaraj. Uh, he gave me very beautiful instructions, but only 1984 I could understand that really there's no other way. I have to get his association. And that's a long separate story which I don't want to tell here because it's, it's not so related to him in a sense. Only in as much that it was Krishna's wish that I should get his personal instruction. And it was also Krishna's wish that I could get the Sanyas Mantra from this Sanyas general in our Sampradaya, who, who had even given Sanyas to Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshava Maharaj and to Srila Bhakti Saranga Goswami Maharaj, amongst many others. His gift in the Sanyas, the Sampradaya, his, general, his position as a general, is so incredible, so important. So to be connected to him, to me, is the greatest joy, is something undeserved you may say but without the difficulties I wouldn't have gotten there so I'm actually appreciating the the difficulties uh, because that is what helped me to to approach another pure devotee with sincerity and with real uh, with real uh, desire and submission because it, it was not easy, because your guru is gone, then what else do you want to do, you know? Are you going to submit to another person who's going to give you different instructions then? Very difficult. Anyhow, I was in that situation, 1984, I said, I want to follow what Sri Ramad really said. I want to go and meet that person who can guide me correctly so that I will not let down the people who have come to me. 
because I was at that time all those years preaching in South America, Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, Panama, Costa Rica. I was preaching up and down and uh, so many people had come to me, people who didn't speak English, they couldn't go to India, they didn't have no money and so many other things. So I was responsible for other people and I was in confusion about how this mission is going to go on. And Srila Sridharmaj gave all the appropriate, correct, sedantic answers. So then, 1984, I was able, by the divine will and grace and arrangement of Krishna, I finally reached there. And uh, by his kindness, he gave me the sannyas initiation, which was very important for me because the person who had given sannyas to me previously in ISKCON, he wasn't in very good standing in those days and he was not uh, an example or an inspiration or a protection, neither for me nor for any of the other devotees. And that's a painful situation because, you know, as a spiritual master or a temple president, you have such a load on your shoulders, such a great responsibility. And if the person you are working for or you're looking up to is not inspiring you by his example, then it is very sad and it's very painful and you can hardly go on. So therefore, I was grateful to be initiated in the Sanyas Mantra by that stalwart spiritual personality who Prabhupada had hand-picked for us for getting further guidance when there was any need for it. And there was need. For me there was need and for many others, I would say for all of us there were need. And those devotees who even until today have not understand the, stood the glories of other Vaishnavas who are not in ISKCON, other Vaishnavas who are um, the well-wishers of the whole world, just like any Vaishnava is, they're lacking something, they're missing something. They're trying to substitute Vaishnavas with some logic and with some uh, uh, grimiums and, and, and whatever, you know. They, they even called uh, for karmi advisors, those who are not devotees, to come in to give advice on how the mission should be run more clearly, more transparent and what so not. But they didn't want to listen to the one Prabhupada had appointed to be qualified to actually guide us and understand everything. So, <coughs> Srila Srila Maharaj is a very glorious personality, as I may be able to convey to you in these words. <coughs> but the real glory of his is his way of speaking, his way of explaining. There is such a unique way in his, in his teachings. It is so sensitive, it is so... So, uh, yes, it is like poetry. It's, it's like a, a expressions of love, what he does when he explains the philosophy, as he also deals with love with everybody. He was a strict Acharya, a strict Sanyasi. He also <coughs> gave some uh, strong words when somebody went off the wall, but his predominant nature was so loving and so caring and so profound that anybody and everybody who went there was touched unless they had a real political agenda and that happened to a few people like one time it was very interesting one devotee went to see Srila Srila Maharaj and uh, this is very very it's actually a beautiful story he, he said um, Srila Maharaj um, we are trying to keep the form together so that we can uh, maintain uh, the mission of Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Srila much answered, no, I am not a form maker, I am a form breaker. Krishna is a form breaker as well. So, in what sense? He said, when there is a diff this decision to be made between, between form and substance, we should shun the form and stay with the substance. We should stay with the truth. What, what is the meaning of coming together and having meetings? Resolution, dissolution, no solution. Huh? What is that? 
The, the purpose of our spiritual teachings is to give guidance to others. So people making many meetings and many resolutions, but there's no solution. And they are not accommodating. Everybody has to be happily accommodated within the family of Krishna consciousness. Today, in every temple, in every Ishtagosti, in every meeting of Vaishnavas, everybody has to be happily accommodated. Of course, a reasonable person, somebody who has a good purpose, who has a clear idea, wants to do good things. I'm not talking about somebody who is totally off the wall. But if people have their own right of an opinion and a vo voice and a vote, then uh, it means the Brahminical standards are kept. Those where people are kept in the dark or quiet and you cannot say anything, you're intimidated by uh, <coughs> threatening authorities, the Brahminical qualities are lost. Everything is lost. Then the people are not speaking their heart. They're not speaking honestly and they are not... And then it becomes a, an institution of a, privileges shared between a few people who are actually not so much interested in the essence at all. But they may be only interested in the form and the benefits, the material benefits they derive from the form. And then they will defend the forms and they will go, they become inimical of the substance. They go against the essence. They will preach against the essence. They will create such such uh, clouds in the sky like, oh, all of you, you have gone against Srila Prabhupada. All of you have given up Prabhupada because you're not submissive to us. So Srila Srinamaj said, dollars, diplomacy and despotism. That is what keeps people in this material world. And spiritual life is dedication, divinity and devotion. That is what is our life. So if we have, like he said, it was funny, three Ds versus three Ds. So he said, you have to be very serious. At one time he told to one important person of the ISKCON movement called Ramiswa, said the next meeting you are going to have now, don't let anybody go home before all the problems are solved. And in this way he kept insisting, don't send these people away. Be, be just. Be generous, let everybody find a place he's happy to stay. Prabhupada, Sri Maharaj, every Acharya wants everybody to be happy. Not only the members of his own mission, also the members of other missions. You see, Srila Sri Maharaj, he had meetings every year, one day after Gopurnima, all the senior Gaudiya Mat Sannyasis who had started their own missions had a meeting in Chaitanya Saraswat Mat called Vishwa Vaishnav Raj Shabha. It was held in the temple of Srila Sridharmaj. So even he had always this idea, yes, now we are many missions, but we still have to contribute and appreciate each other and help each other. As a matter of fact, he gave sannyas to so many of the disciples of his god brothers after they had passed on to encourage everybody and not telling them, now you come and work in my mission. No, now you go back and you work in your mission. Just like Srila Bhakti Pramod Purimaj, because he was one of the senior most Disciples of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur were present on the on the planet. He gave like sannyas to 100 devotees, but he all sent them to their different missions or to start their own missions. It was like his his spiritual help, his love, and this is the mission of Lord Chaitanya. It's it's the idea of helping others. And Sri Ramaj was in that, in, including his books. He said, "No, I don't want anybody to have copyrights on my writings." He said, "I want them to go out that everybody can read them and benefit by these instructions." A, a, a Vaishnava, a, a devotee, is not interested in zonal, uh, in 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 any kind of uh, claim of rights over other people or anything. They are so generous; they give their own life to, for the sake of others. What to speak of giving their uh, their gifts, their paintings, their writings, their, their their speeches or so. So in this way, mm, yes, they are, they have the real mood of Lord Chaitanya. Lord Nityananda. Otherwise, the family of Lord Chaitanya or Lord Nityananda, they could have started a, a franchise of whoever in the world wants to chant this Maha Mantra, they must pay some royalties or something, you know, uh, because he started to bring it, or any silly idea like this. But that's not the mission of Lord Chaitanya and not of our Acharyas. They want to bless the entire planet. They wanted to give the, the real love, the divine love. 
So Srila Srila Maharaj was an outstanding uh, soul amongst the followers of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Highly loved and highly appreciated by his seniors, his, <coughs> his colleagues, and by the juniors of all sides. Whoever didn't get to appreciate him just had a misunderstanding or was misinformed. Just like the poor devotees in Iskon who were told, Sri Ramaj is a form breaker, he wants to break the form Prabhupada constructed. But he just said he wanted to break the illusion that people are, cannot, are not allowed to think for themselves and not allowed to talk their opinion or anything like that. Srila Sridhar said, Krishna says, Sarva Dharma Paricca Ja Mamikam Saranam Vraja. He says, uh, I give the Dharma, Yada Yada Hi Dharma Siaglanir Bhavati Bharata, but then he says, give up all Dharma and just surrender unto me. So Krishna makes the form and then he breaks the form. You know, the spirit, you have to understand the higher spirit of pure devotees' uh, talk. This is very beautiful and very high. So Sri Ramaj was in that spirit completely uh, enlivened to help. And that's what he did. He helped us. He gave us that light we needed at that moment. And uh, after I took sannyas from him, I went to speak to him. I said, now you are also my guru. Not only my shiksha guru, you are also my sannyas guru. Please tell me what shall I do. And he uh, raised his voice and says, why do you ask this to me? You already know what to do. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada has told you what to do. Now you just do it. And then I was shy and so happy in my heart because all my fears of anything, of having to move a little bit away from Prabhupada's teachings was completely driven away. But then I asked him, but I also like to do something personally for you. Then he said, yes, if you get any money, print books of the Vaishnava Acharyas. That's what he said, and that's why we just print, printed Chaitanya Charitamrita in poetic form, in Spanish version. We printed all the books of Srila Sridhar the confidential signs of Bhakti Yoga. And we are going on in different languages to try to spread his message of love. And uh, he said, or you can also help me with the puja of my deities here in, in Navadvi. So in this way, completely, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Sridhar they are transparent guides of the highest quality. In any duality or any minimization of them is of offensive character. If somebody thinks the disciples of Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur are not the well-wisher of the whole world, this is an offense. They're very great and we have to learn to love the devotees in our mission and beyond our mission. This is very necessary. And that's also one of the reasons why the World Vaishnava Association was created and is need, its great need for it to expand its influence in the world because it will be very helpful. There is no other idea like this and the idea comes from Jiva Goswami. And so Srila Sridhar Maharaj was there. He would have been the first president, but it just happened to be so that Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj was the first president. Of course, Sri Ramaj was before in those meetings. So, in other words, the glories of his and his contribution, his books and his publications, his poems, the temples he opened, all this is just wonderful. But Srila Sri Ramaj was, in his own words, always a back-pushing person. He said, I cherish more to sit with a few elevated thinkers in a room and start diving deep into the meaning of the shlokas of Krishna's teachings. I'm not so much into this going out and canvassing, but then again he did it. He opened temples, he sent his devotees preaching all over because he knew that was the spirit of his guru. But he was very keen on preserving the essence, preserving the sweetness, and that's why his name Bhakti Rakak actually means guardian of devotion, guardian, protector of the sweet nectar of what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give. And uh, in this way, Srila Sridhar Maharaj uh, cannot be uh, minimized and cannot be ignored by anybody who today wants to understand the essence of love of Bhakti Yoga. Because it is just too important, too great. And therefore, uh, we are making this effort of taking Srila Sridhar Maharaj's message to all the devotees so they get relief, so that they get joy, that they will get uh, 
enthusiasm to go on with the mission of the pure devotees. Because that's the purpose why Krishna sends his pure devotees into this world, to enthuse everybody. That is our only mission, enthusing everybody. And all my god brothers who are in ISKCON or outside of ISKCON, they have no other business in the world than enthusing everybody, just like Prabhupada enthused us to take up Krishna consciousness. And of course we cannot do the same as Prabhupada did. It's impossible. Prabhupada had such a wonderful capacity. But we can all put our grain of salt and all together we can pray that we may become instruments of his love. Instrument of Prabhupada's love, instrument of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada's love, instrument of Chaitanya Nityananda's love. And if we are allowed to become instruments of their love, well, I guess we also should learn how to love each other. Thanks a lot. Nitai Gold, Premanandi Haribo, Doyal Nitai, Doyal Nitai, Doyal Nitai.